In this video lesson, we will be proving statements on triangle congruence. We will be using the CP, CTC, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It means that if we already proved that the two triangles are congruent, we can now prove that the corresponding parts, like the sides or the angles, are also congruent. Example number one. Our given are AB is congruent to AD, BC is congruent to DC, and AC is congruent to EC. This is the illustration, and we need to prove that angle BAC is congruent to angle BEC. We will have the two column proof, and we will supply them one by one. Our first statement will be AB is congruent to ED, and then the reason is given because it is stated in our given. The second statement will be BC is congruent to DC and the reason is also given. For the third statement, we will just write the third given which is AC is congruent to EC and the reason is also given. As you can see in our illustration, they are already marked. What will be our fourth statement here? What are the two congruent triangles? We have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC because of what postulate? It is because of SSS postulate. Now, since the two triangles are congruent, we can say that this angle, angle BAC, is congruent to angle DEC because of Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or CPCTC. Example number two. Our given R, B is the midpoint of RI and OB is perpendicular to RI. This is the illustration and the given R already marked. Next, we need to prove that RO is congruent to IO. We will have our two column proof. Our first statement will be B is the midpoint of RI. So our reason is the word given. For the statement number two, we need to apply the first statement. B is the midpoint of RI. Meaning, we can say that RB is congruent to IB because midpoint divides the segment into two congruent parts. Our reason will be definition of midpoint. And then for the third statement, we can write OB is perpendicular to RI, which is our another given, so the reason is also given. What do we mean by perpendicular? If OB is perpendicular to RI, it means that there are two right angles created. The two right angles created are angle RBO and angle IBO. These two angles are right angles. And then the reason will be definition of perpendicularity. And then for the fifth statement, this is not yet our final statement. We can say that angle RBO is congruent to angle IBO since they are both right angles. Our reason will be all right angles are congruent. For the sixth statement, which side is being shared by the two triangles? This side is side BO is congruent to side BO because of reflexive property. And then for the seventh statement, we can now prove that the two triangles are congruent. So what are the two congruent triangles? We have triangle RBO is congruent to triangle IBO because of SAS postulate. Since the two triangles are already congruent, we can now prove that RO is congruent to IO because of CPCTC. Example number three. Our given R, angle EHM is congruent to angle OMH 
OH is parallel to EM. So what do we mean by parallel lines? And then this is the illustration. So as you can see, OH is parallel to EM. So it has two arrows. It denotes that the two lines are parallel. Parallel lines meaning the two lines will not meet even though we will extend them to the left or to the right. And then we need to prove that EH is congruent to OM. This is our two-column proof. We still have continuation in the next slide. For the first statement, we can write that angle EHM is congruent to angle OMH. And then the reason will be given. Can we exhaust or can we have another statement from the statement number one? We don't have. And then for the second statement, which side is being shared by both triangles? We have side HM is congruent to side MH. And this is because of reflexive property. For the third statement, we can now write OH is parallel to EM. And that is another given. And then for the fourth statement, since we have two parallel lines which are OH and EM, it is cut by the transversal HM. If you can still remember the parallel lines cut by transversal. So what are the other pairs of congruent angles here? We have angle OHM is congruent to angle EMH. And then what will be the reason? What is the relationship of angle OHM and angle EMH. They are alternate interior angles. And according to our theorem, the alternate interior angles are congruent. For the fifth statement, we can now prove that the two triangles are congruent. What are the two congruent triangles? We have triangle EMH is congruent to triangle O. HM because of what postulate? Because of ASA postulate. Since the two triangles are congruent, we can now prove that EH is congruent to OM because of CPCPC. Let's have our last example. Our given R SI is perpendicular to AP, AR is perpendicular to SP. And AR is congruent to SI. And this is our illustration. And then we need to prove that PR is congruent to PI. This is the first set of two column proof. The first statement will be SI is perpendicular to AP. And then the reason will be given. Since SI is perpendicular to AP, what is the angle or right angle being created. Our right angle is angle PIS and then the reason will be definition of perpendicularity. For the third statement, we have AR is perpendicular to SP and then the reason will be given. Since they are perpendicular, what is the right angle? The right angle is angle P. R, A, and then the reason is also definition of perpendicularity. Since we already have two right angles, we can say that angle PIS is congruent to angle PRA, which is all right angles are congruent. For the sixth statement, I want you to look at the illustration which angle is being shared by both triangles. So that is angle P, but for distinction, we will have three letters for this one. So we have angle APR is congruent to angle SPI, this one. And then the reason will be, since they are both angle P, we can say that this is reflexive property. And then for the seventh statement, we can now use the last given, which is AR is congruent to SI, and then the reason will be given. 
For the H statement, we can now prove that the two triangles are congruent. So we have triangle PRA is congruent to triangle PIS according to AAS theorem. Since the two triangles are already proved to be congruent, we can now say that PR is congruent to PI using CPCPC. So that's how we prove the corresponding parts of congruent triangles.